get ready somewhere there it is we were sending our signal up to the satellites and now we are beaming down to all of our friends in youtube land welcome to the workout we're getting it up on youtube and um again really great to have everybody let's get unmuted too so we got to make sure we take down the the mute when i get muted sometimes i don't know and i'm talking for a while let's go ahead everybody make sure we have some water to drink so if you don't have your water uh, take a moment right now and ask somebody to help you get some water maybe go and get some water yourself but you want to have something to drink for your workout you don't want to go an, an entire hour without drinking water um, especially if you're exercising so let's get things started off with a workout uh, with the water and then let's find out who's going to start our workout with the breathing motto um, let's check in and see who we got on here we got some folks who might know it I see Nick's got his hand up Nick you got it Nick's coming up here everybody and low oh, look at him Nick look at this I got mine too I got a I got a pan with a ball today. Nice. All right, Nick. You gonna do the breathing motto with with the pan? Yep. All right. All right. And and by body to end on a breathe in the dirt. Breathe out the bed. Breathe in the happy. And Breathe out the dead and breathe in your pain and breathe out the wood and breathe in your power. <laughs> do you do it? You don't foot. Oh, Nick. Do y'all think Nick did Nick? Did you spill any soup doing that? No. I don't think he did. No. I did. I spilled I spilled the red ball. When you went overhead, I realized that's not gonna work. And I had to get the red ball before I threw it into these snowflakes back here. Nick, that's super creative, man. That's what we're talking about, everybody. Great job to Nick using his creativity on that breathing motto. That's so cool. Remember on Monday, we did a workout. We actually used a like soup pot that you would maybe have on your stove. Nick's got his right there uh, today. Or actually, I have a frying pan. And so we'll do a couple exercises with the frying pan and me and Ben were talking about it. We might have a whole like cooking themed holiday uh, cooking exercise, something like that. Maybe we can come up with uh, and we'll be ready for that. We'll be trained up. So again, great job to Nick getting creative with the breathing motto and the, the, the pan movements and not spilling the soup. So again, good job to Nick. Let's go ahead and get our neck warmed up. Just like you might be warming up some soup. Who likes cold soup? I don't know. Is that a thing? Is there some cold soup? There's got to be some cold soups out there, but not too often. Most of the time, soups are warmed up. Let's get our body warmed up and let's get our neck moving around. Let's do our classic. Uh, we'll do our classic five moves and let's go ahead and go side to side to start. So let's go over to the one side. We're going to just hold it there for maybe two seconds and then over to the other side. Two. Going over again. Three. Over this way, four, five, and about every two seconds, six. It's giving it a little extra hold, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, nice job. Let's go with our up and downs. Let's do uh, the diagonal. So let's change that up just a little bit. We'll go five and five, and we'll go down to the shoulder. And then up to this other side. And we're just going diagonally down and up and down, bringing it back up, bringing it back down. Let's go one more after this, and then we'll switch sides. Bringing it down and up. If you want to, you can bring one down in the middle just to get a feeling for it. Bring that up, and then we'll go down to this other shoulder and bring it kind of up and over. Get down to one side, bringing it up and over. And remember, you can just imagine you're looking at kind of like a diagonal line and you're just checking it out and your head will move along with your imagination of where that diagonal line goes and over. Same thing with the rainbow. If I imagine that I'm looking at a great big rainbow and I'm just thinking like, oh, wow, look at this rainbow. 
all the way up. Wow, it's way up there. Look at that. Look at the top of the rainbow. And then I start bringing it down and bringing it over. Now, if I do that with my head and my neck, again, I'm getting great movement from those muscles. So again, bringing it up. Wow, look at that rainbow. Again, it's a great way to picture it. What about a snowflake? With a snowflake, what do these snowflakes look like? They have a kind of four directions to these, maybe, maybe eight. Or maybe they got eight. Maybe there's more than that. Maybe there's 20. Let's try it out. Let's try a snowflake. Let's go. She should be good. She's good. Let's go up and then bring it down. And then we'll bring one over back to the middle, over to the side. Here we go. Diagonally down, right in here, going straight down. And back to the middle, going down this way, back to the middle, going down that way, back to the middle, over here, and then going up this way. Wow, there are a lot of pieces to a snowflake. Imagine that. Imagine every day if you did just two snowflakes. If you did two snowflake head movements, you went one going one direction and then one going the other direction. If you think about that, Maybe during the winter time, you say, I'm going to wake up in the winter, and if it's cold outside, I'm going to do the snowflake neck warm up. And you just kind of imagine to yourself that you're just drawing out that snowflake, just moving your head around in all the different snowflake directions. And again, you're going to get a nice warm up for your neck, just like we were warming up the soup. We're going to be warming up our neck. Let's do the ear lift. So let's imagine this snowflakes here can kind of give us something to listen to. And so we're getting pulled up. Maybe these snowflakes are on a string. We got caught on the string. We're getting pulled up by our ear. Let's hold it here. We're getting the arms going down and the necks going up. Three, two, one. And then bring it into the middle. Let's maybe move those shoulders around a little bit. Moving them around. Looks like I'm standing sideways a little bit. You know, my camera always messes with me. All right, here we go. Going up with the other ear. So I got my ear going up, bringing it up, reaching up high. Got my ear going up, got my shoulder going down. Three, two, one, and then let's do a couple circles again back in the middle. Kind of getting our neck still involved and getting that trapezius going too. Nice job, everybody. All right, let's go with the giraffe neck. Let's go ahead and bring the giraffe neck out. And then the turtle neck, bringing it back. We go giraffe, turtle, giraffe, turtle, giraffe, turtle. Let's do two more. Giraffe, turtle, giraffe, and turtle. Nice job, everybody. Now I can feel a difference already now in my neck and just also in my awareness. My, my body's kind of feeling a little more ready to go. So let's have a sip of water and then let's get our body moving. Nick, what do you think the most ever amount of sides there are to a snowflake, could there be? Don't they say every snowflake's a little different? That's incredible. That's hard to believe, but that's what they say. And I can you imagine all the different little icicle little? I mean, it could be in the millions. I don't, Nick. I don't know. Do you know? Nick doesn't know. I don't know either. And when you don't know something, you raise up your trapezius. You go trapezius. You're like, I don't know. I don't know. And you raise it on up. And what you're doing is again, you're lifting your shoulder blades. You're lifting your arm. You got your elbow and your hand are getting kind of moving up. Sometimes you'll see people in the gym and they'll be holding some weights and they'll be doing an exercise called the shrug because that's what it is. It's a shrug. You're just kind of being like, I don't know. And you can do it on one side. Doing it on one side is good. Sometimes it takes some thought. Sometimes you want to do two and just training the one all on its own can be really good. Again, it's, it's good to be thoughtful about doing both things individually and doing things together when we can incorporate both sides. So again, a couple shoulders, maybe moving them around a little bit, moving forwards and backwards. This is always, this is kind of a classic move, everybody. You could do this every day. A couple shoulder rolls, some trapezius lifts, bringing them forward and backward. Remember when I bring them forward and then take them back where you see the front of my shirt? On the back of my shirt, front of my shirt, back of my shirt, front, back, front, back, front, front, back, front. We're moving the shoulders. It's all that, all that, even though it's kind of fun just to kind of get into a rhythm with it. 
We're thinking about the training. We're thinking about getting this part of our body going. I got this Ironman shirt on. Let's go ahead. Let's do a couple exercises for the arms that are kind of like what the Ironmen do. We remember they do the triathlon. So one of them is swimming. Let's go ahead and do an arm, an extension from the shoulder. We're going to be reaching up, bringing our arm down and kind of maybe even pushing the water back. Let's do a couple because we're, we're reaching out and just kind of swimming through the water, going up, bringing that arm up, bringing it down, reach up as high as you can. And then kind of bring it down or you can reach out in front of your body and then just kind of let it come down. You know, re- bringing it out, you should feel like you could pause it at any time. And so if we see if we did freeze, you could freeze and then bring it on down. And then we're going again and we're maybe swimming around and then we go freeze. Ah, Let's keep on going. There we go. That wasn't a real freeze. Let's keep on going. Sometimes I like to freeze on camera and sometimes. The internet just freezes on me. Let's keep on going, keep on paddling, keep on reaching up. Maybe try a different stroke. Maybe do, uh, was this one, the butterfly stroke? So we're going to bring our arms out, bring them together, bring them up the middle, and then kind of bringing our arms back around. So again, we're making kind of two circles here and then meeting together in the middle. Nice. Let's go for 10 more of these. 10, 9, good job, 8. Seven, six, keep it going. Here we go. Five, bringing them out. Four, and remember, you can go slow, three, or you can go fast. Two, and one. All right. What's another thing they do with the triathlon? So they go swimming first, and then what do they do? They hop on a bike. So let's get riding with the bike. Let's get the hand cycle going. If you want to do the bicycle, you can lay down on your back. And you can do the bicycle with your legs. And so remember, with the bicycle, it's kind of like Byron's kayak row, where we have one going forward, and we got one going back. One forward, one back. One forward, one back. There we go. Nice job, everybody. And we got to go for some endurance on this. So even though our muscles, we might be feeling them, and the muscles are kind of, they want us to kind of stop. Our body might be saying, hey, you know what? Let's stop Well, let's tell our muscles, say, let's try to keep going a little bit more. Let's see if we can keep it going, keep it moving, keeping those arms going around and around, keeping it going. And again, imagine you're on the hand cycle, and this is the one where we're reciprocating. Let's switch it up. Let your arms shake them out for a second. Shake them out. We're going to switch up bikes, and now we're going to go on the tandem crank. So now we have both handles going, and we're moving it around. Remember, these are the bikes we saw when we were down there at the uh, sports camp. This is what those kids were riding. They were on the, the, the crank bike and we're pulling it forward and bringing it back and bringing it around. And if you weren't, if you were doing all of your circles here in front of your body, try to bring them back now. Let's go for 10 where we go forward and try to bring those elbows back. Get your shoulder blades involved. Get your rhomboids moving. Here we go. Eight, seven, bringing them back. Six, five, four, three two and one wow do you feel the difference oh my gosh remember there's a lot of things we can do with our shoulder where we don't have to involve the whole shoulder but sometimes we can't but we have to think about it we got to think all right am i getting my trapezius am i getting my rhomboids in my lats is are my pecs is everything is my deltoid is it feeling good And you might be making a movement. You might be making a transfer. You might be moving something. Maybe you have a holiday package. Maybe something showed up at the door and it's heavy. And you're like, I don't want to leave this here at the door. I want to be able to move this. I want to be able to use my muscles and be able to help out. And again, that's where that thoughtfulness is going to come in. Bringing those elbows back, that gets more of our shoulders involved. And it really helps out the shoulder blades. All right, there's one more thing to do. Let's have a sip of water. Because triathletes drink water when they're on their race. And the next thing we're going to do is going to be, it's the jock. It's the locomotion. So let's go ahead and we're going to get those arms moving forward and backwards. If you want to, you could also do where you're in a roll position and you're going to be reaching up, grabbing onto kind of the, the back of your wheel, almost the top, and then rolling over. And so working on that push. The key, if you're working on your roll push, 
is again to work on pulling those shoulders back. Get the shoulder blades involved. You can do it without using them or you can do it where you are using them. Same thing with our locomotion. I could just do this in front of my body right here and you can see my elbows, they're not going, they're not even getting that snowflake behind me. Look at that. And then I can do it. Look at that. Wow. I'm really moving my arm all the way as far back as I can and I'm getting that kind of reciprocation. So remember, the one side goes back and the other side goes forward. And so we're switching them out. We don't we don't run with both of the arms moving forward at the same time because that would create our body, our energy and our core. It would it would allow it to kind of spin around itself. Let's keep going. Let's go for a little endurance. Let's do about 30 more seconds. We got to get those arms and shoulders moving and we're grooving. You're probably going to feel this in your core a little bit. You're going to start to get those core muscles involved because the arms and the shoulders are moving around the core. You can kind of see the shirt that I'm wearing. It's kind of moving a little bit. We got 10 more seconds. Keep going, everybody. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and relax. Nice. If you need to shake it off, shake it off a little bit. Good job, everybody. Go ahead and have a sip of water. You got to stay hydrated. I thought that was excellent. Let's do a couple more uh, for our hands. And we're just going to be getting ready. Remember, I'm going to do a few exercises with the frying pan in just a few minutes. But let's think about our elbow. And let's just work on just some elbow movement. So maybe the elbow circle or the bicep curl. Those are really good ones. Another one you can do is the twist. All right. So we got a couple ones. We got at the elbow, we could go circle, kind of like we're spinning things around. But look, this part of my arm is not really moving a lot. There's some muscles working, but the movement is happening at the elbow right there. And then I can do, again, bicep and tricep. So this bicep, and that's tricep. Bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep. Bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep. Biceps on kind of the, the top or the front and the triceps kind of the, the back of our arm in this situation. So again, bicep, tricep, nice job. All right, and then again, twisting. So when I'm twisting, you can see at the elbow, I have movement. I'm not really moving this part of my arm, but I'm rotating my whole wrist, I'm rotating my hand all the way around. Like I'm turning like a great big knob, reaching out and maybe turning on a, like on the water, a great big water faucet, turning it or spinning something. You know, this like, it's like when you got to change the oil on your car, this is when they're putting on the oil filter. This is it. Let's go to the other side too. So again, we can go circle. We can move around at that elbow. Let's do about for five seconds. Here we go. Four, three, two, and one. Let's go for some biceps, in and out, biceps and triceps. Biceps and triceps, there we go, bringing it in and out. You can also do this down and up. So this would work down and up. Anytime you extend that arm out, you're gonna get that tricep going. And anytime you bring that hand closer to your body, you get the bicep going. Let's go for about 10 more of these. Let's, let's really get them going. We wanna have, what people will call tone arms. Tone arms means that your muscles in your arms are ready for action. They're toned and they're ready. And if you're gonna be doing something, you're gonna want the muscles that are ready, ready for action. All right, so we got our circle, we got our bicep curl, and then let's go ahead and work on putting on the oil filter. This is what it's tough. Sometimes you gotta put your hand up in the car and you got to get find the right spot and you got to turn that oil filter to get in place. I don't know too many other things that I've ever spun like this with a, my oil filter is the way to go. Spinning it, maybe spin it this other way. Maybe we were doing it wrong. It wasn't going on, spinning it around. And so remember, we're working on our rotation at the wrist. Kind of neat. Let's do two more. One and two. Now talking about the wrists. Let's get them in action. Let's get the wrist moving. Let's go with the classics. So what are they? Up and down, of course. Of course, we can move the wrist. Go up, bring it up. You can see I got my wrist here, bringing it down, up, down, up, side to side. 
side to side with the wrist. So, and we could also do kind of diagonals. You know, that's an up and down with the side to side. You can go diagonally. It's still kind of a classic move. And then we have rotation. So we're moving them all around, going down, bringing them in, bringing them up, bringing them over this way, down and around. Nice job. Let's go three, two, and one. Nice stuff, everybody. Let's have a sip of water and then let's have um, let's have our core get a workout. You want to lead us in a core exercise, Nick? Yep. All right, let's do it, everybody. Nick does a great job with core exercises. Remember, our core is going to be the center of our body. So from our hips all the way up to our chest. That's going to be the core muscles. And there's a lot of ways to get them moving and grooving. And so, Nick, what are we going to do first? Abdominal squeeze. All right, here we go, everybody. For the abdominal squeeze, Nick is up. Let's squeeze that core. He's got his feet down on the floor. Keep it going, Nick. Remember to breathe. Come on, breathe in that energy. Bring your butt down a little bit. There you go. Make it a little tougher on yourself. Nice, right in there. Now squeeze your core, and there you go. Keep keep yourself in that spot. Everybody at home, we're going to be squeezing our core about 30 to 40% squeeze. If you want to, real quick, give yourself the tightest core squeeze you can do, just for one second. And now you know what that feels like. We don't want to do that this whole time. Let out about half of the squeeze. So maybe a 50% squeeze. Something that you can still breathe while you're squeezing. Find that squeeze and breathe where you don't have to let go of the squeeze. You don't have to do that. Your muscles, they can contract and you can take that breath. It's really great. It's a good thing we can do that. Nick is still going. We'll have to go to YouTube for the time though, Nick, but you just keep going. You're doing great. Anybody on YouTube, you can check that timer and you're going to know what Nick's got going on. The reason we have our elbows up is because remember, not only is this kind of like the position that Nick's in, but when you bring your elbow up, you're going to get these muscles here involved. Nice job, Nick. Round of applause for that. But he's not done yet, everybody. Nick, give us one more. I know you got – give us another core exercise. That was excellent. I would say that was over a minute. Easy. And what do you got next for us? That was maybe a minute and a half. Who knows on YouTube. We're going with a teacup. Holding the teacup. Ooh, I like it. Teacup hold. We don't want to spill too much tea, though. Oh, we're going with the other side teacupping. So we got back-to-back -back teacup hold. A teacup and a teacup hold. This is the only difference. We're just holding it for time. That would be a teacup if you're just doing it real quickly. If you did a teacup hold, you're going to hold the teacup. And you can do that with almost any exercise. You know, Nick did an abdominal hold he did the plank hold if he would have just gone up for like one second that'd have been like maybe just a quick plank but holding it is the key nice getting a stretch and again now we're holding our arm across our body so again stretching all these muscles they're all kind of diagonally lined muscles they connect our body kind of they're all it's all about twistiness it's a lot about twistiness and we're going the other way the twistiness it also helps to keep us in our position with our posture. Even though something is ro is twisting, there can be like a bone or part of our body that's going to be still held up by that. All right, now we're going to go into a coffee pot. Are we holding the coffee pot? He is. We're holding it. And you're going to feel an oblique stretch. You're going to feel the muscles on the side of your core. Those are your obliques. They're there. We all got obliques. There's nobody here that doesn't have obliques and we're stretching them out. Nice job. There you go. Nice, Nick. Moving over to the other side. And again, that's what the coffee pot's all about. It's all about getting our hips to hinge and to get our obliques to give us a nice stretch through the obliques. All right. Pouring out the coffee. Ooh, all right. And now he's going into the witch's pot, everybody. So remember, we go down and out, up and in, down and out, up and in. Look at Nick's form, everybody. What a wonderful job, Nick. That is excellent, man. Look at the squat, everybody. 
if you all remember, oh my gosh, Nikki, look at that. How low can you go? That's how low, that's the lowest possible you can go. Nick, that is excellent squatting his quadriceps and hamstrings. And now he's doing a squat hold. He's holding the squat. He's showing off those quadriceps and those hamstrings. And he's doing an arm circle. He's still holding the squat. I know his legs are on fire right now, everybody. He is feeling those muscles. He has to remember to breathe. Got to remember to breathe. There you go. Moving those arms around. Got the arm circle squat hold combo, Nick. Giving us a countdown. I'll count it down, Nick. Keep it going. Five, four, three, two, and relax. Let's have a water break. Wow. Everybody. Combo Nick is also Nick, the team leader. Remember, everybody, when we're thinking about exercise, and you, especially when you're thinking about exercising with your friends or with your family, I want you to feel like you can say, hey, look at what I can do, or hey, let's try to do this, or like, hey, watch me. I'm going to show, I want to show you something. And we're like what Nick did right there, again, showing us some really great moves, getting our body moving around. I love when our friends share the exercises and their, their creativity. I love that. I'm going to show everybody. It sounds good, Ben. I'm going to show everybody a couple creative things that now I'm going to be doing with the frying pan. So let's have a sip of water if we didn't. Now, you might remember on Monday, I had the pot like what Nick has, like the cooking pot that you're going to put soup in or maybe make spaghetti or something like that. Today I have a pan, but remember with the pot, we were working on things like just working with it, using it as a weight where we were maybe going to spill the soup or we were trying to hold it up to where we weren't going to spill it. So I'm trying to hold it flat, working on my wrist strength right here. Um, we also were reaching out again. You saw Nick. I like that today. We were reaching out in the different directions, almost as if you're like serving up somebody at a table. Maybe you're at a table. It's a round table. And you're serving up somebody over to this side, serving up over here. Maybe you're reaching out to somebody in front of you saying, hey, do you want to take a little bit? Maybe you got a little appetizer on there for the holidays and you're serving it up. Now, the other thing we showed was when you could add an object. So I was adding my water bottle. I actually put the water bottle in. And in this case, I have this red ball. This is just a classic red ball and... um Again, with this, I can kind of move it around and try to keep it from rolling off. So now there's a little bit of a challenge of trying to keep it steady. Plus, there's also going to be the weight of the ball. You can see Nick, he's got the weight of his water bottle is making that heavier for him. Nice job moving it around. Now, one thing, and Nick, I don't know if you have a ball, like a golf ball or a tennis ball or um, a baseball would work. Or even just like a small red ball. Something You can even make a ball out of paper. You can make a paper ball. But one of the things I wanted to show is, is just making the, it go around in the circle. So if I'm going here and I'm just trying to get this ball to kind of spin around in the pan without it falling out. Now, everybody's probably looking at the ball spinning in the pan. But now what I want you to look at is my shoulder and my elbow in my wrist so you can see there's that little bit of movement do you see the little bit of movement right there and now what i like to think about and i know other people have probably called it the same thing but i look at that as it's a micro movement it's a oh and then i lost the ball it's a little tiny movement that we're making with our muscles as opposed to a great big movement where we're maybe reaching out with our arms or so so when you're thinking about the micro the micro movements, now that was my right side. Now I'm going to go to my left side, which I'm sometimes not as good with. And now I have to concentrate on moving this around in here. And so I'm just moving the ball around. And everybody saw what happened when I stopped concentrating. I lost it. I have to concentrate. And that's another great way for a game like this to be fun to do. You could do this in the kitchen before you have anything in there. Oh, and there goes the ball again. I lost it. So with those exercises, you're working out your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist, and it can be fun too. Remember, if you're doing it with food, you want to be careful. You don't want the food to splash 
out of the pan. But if you're doing it with something like a ball here, and again, I'll go one more time trying to move this around. Oh, and it just went right up because you have to concentrate. You have to focus about it. And I was, I was focused on is the pan being able to see in the video. And I think some of you all saw that. And you're probably like, Coach John, that, that's what happened. Now, the next one, Nick, I know you might like this one. So the next one's going to be, has anybody ever seen somebody flip a pancake on a, on a skillet like this, on a frying pan skillet? Flip a pancake and it flips up, sticks to the ceiling. Anybody ever seen that? I've never seen that. But what I want to work on with this is we have three ways that we can throw or we can bounce this object. So the first way that we can do this, and it, it might be a little harder to see because it's going to be down low, is with my trapezius. So the first throw I'm going to do is with my trapezius, and I'm going to lift my trapezius, and, and, the, and it comes up. So I lift up my trapezius, and the whole arm and the whole pan comes up. I got the ball here. I go trapezius lift, and then I, I bring it up, and you can see how my arm, it's just following my trapezius and the ball's actually see nick got it too it's launching out i'm gonna go one more with the trapezius lift throw here we go up and there it is i caught it back in here now the next one i can do is going to be with my bicep and my tricep and my elbow so with this one i'm going to bend at the elbow and i'm going to bring it up and i'm going to throw the ball so again now watch my trapezius i'm not going to use it i'm going to go up here and then it throws the ball up in the air. Let's go for another one here. I'm going to try to keep my arm down. And so I'm using my bicep to create the power. So my arm's down here, holding on. I go up with the bicep. And then that brings the pan up and it brings the ball up so fast that it flies in the air. Now, the last one I can do is with the wrist. So I can take it here. I could hold it down low, but I'm going to hold it up here so you can see. But if you're holding it down low, you're just going to flip it up and catch it in the pan. Here, I'm going to flip it up, and I didn't catch it. And that's part of the fun. That's the sense of urgency. And then there we go. I got one, two, three. Whoa, that was tough. That one bounced out. Three. Oh, there's four and five. So, again, I'm working on just flipping my wrist to be able to get those. So, remember, there's three ways that we can kind of flip our food. We can do trapezius lift, which is going to get everything up and, and getting it flying up out of the pan. There we go. Oh, almost caught it. But you see what happens when I get distracted. When I look over at the camera and not at the ball, I almost lose it every time. If I focus on the exercise, I get a pretty good job of, of catching it every time. But I got to focus. I got to concentrate on catching it and bringing it up. So that's the trapezius. This would be with the bicep. I think I'd like to do this with like a sandbag. If I had a sandbag like what Byron and Nick have, this would be a good one to do with the sandbag. And then the last one, would, oh, it popped out with me again there. The last one's going to be with the wrist. So I'm just taking out the wrist and I'm just flipping it up, flipping the wrist, just trying to make a little bit of, of enough power there to get the ball to pop right out. Now, remember, if you're doing it with food, you want to be careful. You don't drop anything on the floor. Um, if you do, you got five seconds to pick it up. Everybody knows that. All right, let's have a sip of water, everybody. Nick, what'd you think about that? Thumbs up. Did you feel that in your wrist and your bicep? Nice. We did get a thumbs up. Awesome job. Nick was following along. And again, he had kind of a stove top like a soup pot, and then this was with the pan. Maybe uh, maybe we'll do one more on Friday, and we'll use maybe a, um, I don't know, maybe a, a, another pan or a pan and a pot. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll make a whole dinner. I don't know. All right, everybody. Again, we got our neck going, shoulders, biceps, triceps, we kind of got our armpit going there. You know, when we were doing that, those small circles and those movements, that's a lot of these muscles in here in your armpit that are firing up. We got our core going with Nick 
Uh, let's go ahead, everybody. Let's bring up Byron. He's going to be doing his combo for us, and um, I'll call out the play-by-play. -play. Everybody, if you need to, have a sip of water. Make sure if you have it, go ahead and grab your, your baton, grab your sandbag. You can get if you could also use an exercise pillow. Um, quite quite a few things that you could use for the first exercise, which is going to be. Are we going around the, with the sandbag? He's going to get himself all set up. All right, yeah, Nick, you can join in. Everybody, Nick's going to join in, and he's going to he's going to work out and follow along with Byron being the teacher. All right, everybody, here we go. It's a side-to-side -side start to the game. Here it is. Side-to-side -side is right hand, left hand, passing it off from the right hand to the left hand. And then Byron just real nice and smooth, went right behind his back, real nice and easy. And then right hand, left hand, behind the back. Let's see how many times he goes right hand. One, two, behind the back. One, two, behind the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And behind the back again. Look at him going. So, again, it's switching hands in the front. Then take it behind your back. Nice and smooth. And he's moving backwards while he's still going right hand, left hand. And then again behind the back. Nice move, Byron. Keeping it going along. He moved all the way forward. He's right up by the camera. And now he's moving back into the middle of the room. He's got a lot of space there. He can do a lot of things in that space. And there you go. You can see him going all the way down, doing a sweeper off the ground, cleaning up the floor. We call that the sweeper or maybe the swiffer. Got to go down and get to get the dust off the floor. The dust bunny's there. And there again, going back into the rhythm, down off the floor again, and back into the right, left, and getting into the bowler toss, throwing it right up in the air and sweeping the ground. So he went from a bowler to the sweeper and around the back again. Now he's in front of his body going one, two. Down off the ground, popped it up in the air with a great catch off the ground. And look at that catch. He got it just by his pinky on that one. And that was terrific, everybody. He's cleaning off home plate. He is dusting off home plate for the Padres because they're coming around. It's a grand slam. And now Byron's going to the bowling alley. Oh, he's going to the bowling alley, and then he's going for the figure eights. He's going to the Harlem Globetrotters. There we go. Nice job, Byron, popping it off the ground. On his back, and he's hanging loose. He's hanging it out, moving it around, chopping up the salad while he is in the hip hinge position with the weight on his back. Nice job, Nick. Nick's got it, too. There we go. Nice job. Going one, two, one, two in front of the body, behind the back again. Going up on top of our head. Here we go. This is the neck balance, but this is the whole body. It's not just the neck. It's the whole core. There you go, Nick. Now, don't overthink it. Just breathe. Oh, you can't, you can't think about it. You got to just think, folks. Oh, he's got it. He, Nick dropped it from his head to a parrot. Oh, wasn't that classic? Nice move, Nick. Byron's got it on his head. Nick's bringing it back on top of his head. That was a good move. I think Byron's going to do something here. He is. He's got, he's got the balance on his head, and he's going to move around. He's doing a 360. He's going all the way around, dropping it off his head into his hands. Nice move, Byron. And then we are going for the parrot. So, Nick, go ahead and pick up the bag. And now up on the shoulder, we got the pirate's parrot. Get that balance going on one shoulder, then going on to the other shoulder. Nice job, fellas. Doing great. Good moves around the back. Super smooth. Nice moves, Byron. There we go. He's turning all the way around. There we go. Come on, Tyler. You got it, too. There we go, Carl. Yeah, Evan. Let's follow these guys. Cheer them on. Nice job, Byron, going the one-twos around the back. There we go, bringing it down to the ground, popping it up. Keep it going, Byron, off the ground again, getting ready for the switcheroo with the resistance bar. If you have a resistance bar, you could also use maybe a wooden dowel or an exercise stick or a baton. Any of those would work. And that's going to get you into here with Byron doing – Everything. He's giving himself a knee tap right there. I like that knee tap. All right. Nice. Nick's going for it also. Tap in the knee. Byron's holding the resistance bar up in the air with two hands. Nick's got it with two hands. Both the guys are getting down low going into the squat position. Now, we know Nick's ready for the squats. We saw it earlier. That leg strength has become 
Outstanding. There you go. Nick's all the way down low. Byron's in the low position. Nice job. There you go. Bringing it back up. Excellent job, everybody. Doing the squats with the resistance bar. Terrific. There you go, Byron. Again, getting down low. Great moves. Great job. Bringing it back up. Excellent. Lifting the resistance bar up. He's going to hold it in the middle with one hand. Reaching out in front of his body. And it looks like he's doing a the one-arm inchworm. So he is. He's going down and, and he's using the bar to support the squat. Nice job, Nick. There you go. Remember to be pushing down. So the bar is not going to fall down. You're holding it. You're pushing on it. And it's going to support your balance. Excellent move, Byron. There you go, Nick. That's got to feel good, man. That was good, Nick. You've gotten a couple of them right now. There you go, Byron. The inchworm, it's a great exercise, everybody. If you can do this one, again, you're just moving down the bar. You're trying to keep the bar from falling over. You're also going to use it to help you with your squat so you can get down low. All right, now we're holding it in the middle. Two hands. It's a baton spin. Look at that. Look at the start to that baton spin from Byron. And this is going around and around, everybody. We are really spinning. He is going nonstop, spinning the baton. There you go, Byron. Look at the moves. Nick, you got it. And then he's going to tap it on the ground. One tap and a spin. Another tap and a spin. There we go. And he's tapping right there and spinning right there, moving the baton like he doesn't have a care. Nice job. Nice. Ben's using the sandbag. I see that, Ben. Nice moves. Ben's spinning that sandbag around, everybody. There you go. Spinning it. There you go, Nick. Keep on it. Keep on it. Got to stay focused. Stay focused. Work on those elbows like when we were putting on the oil filter. Yep, just like that. There you go, Nick. Just like that. Just like the oil filter. There it is. Nice move. Look at that spin, Nick. That was really good. Oh, Byron's going to one hand hold. He's doing a high five. Another high five. Reach out. You can give Byron a high five. I like it. Nice job. High five and Byron while he's holding the 10 pound resistance bar. That's not easy, everybody. That's a real exercise. That's tough stuff. Holding that bar with one hand up in the air like that. Wow. Byron's bringing it into his chest, getting ready. He could go up or down or side to side. He could go so many directions with that bar. He's bringing it down to his legs and then he's reaching it back up, bringing it up back to his chest. So dropping it down, letting those biceps, letting him let the biceps lengthen out. And then bringing it up, curling those biceps back in, kind of like a reverse grip bicep curl that Byron's got. And that's his great move. And look at this, everybody. He is going from the bicep curl, and he's doing a super slow motion kayak row. Look at this guy right here moving in speed. Now, when you're moving slow and you're using heavy weight, that's when you're going to be building strength. So if you do exercises, what Byron and Nick are doing right now is going to make these guys stronger. And it will absolutely happen. And if you're doing it with them, you're getting stronger too. Moving in slow motion helps you get strong. And now you can see Byron speeding it up. There you go, Byron. It looks like he's in the kayak now and he is heading down the river and he's full speed ahead. Byron and Nick are in a kayak race at the Olympics and they're going and they're paddling along and it's Paris and they're moving through. Can y'all believe we've got another Olympics coming up this year, everybody. We're already at the Olympics again. Remember we used to have Olympics workouts and now we did a winter Olympics and now summer's coming around again. Byron could be in that Olympics in the kayak row. He's going for endurance. He's got it going. He's moving and grooving. He's going to the Marines, spinning that baton, back into the baton spin. Excellent moves, Byron, keeping it going. Real good stuff. Spinning it around. One more spin. Tap on the ground. Spinning it again. Going for the Lumberjack. Nice, Byron. Up into the Lumberjack, slowing things down. If you think about it, we were doing all that spinning, and now the baton's not moving at all. Now Byron's doing the moving, forward and backward, 
Great job, everybody. Remember, if you can move backwards, do some backwards movement when you can. I see some of you moving backwards right now. And that's what, even if you're just leaning back and leaning forward, you can lean back and you can lean forward and your brain is going to get excited about that. There you go. Byron's in a lumberjack down low, getting under the tree, moving through the forest. This is how you got to get through the forest. Nick's all the way down. He went all the way down. He's he's on the ground, getting underneath the trees, underneath the shrubs, standing back up. Byron's doing the lumberjack squats, everybody. Byron, that might be the first time. This might be the first time. I think it is. Lumberjack squats, everybody. Byron's doing the lumberjack squats for the first time with Nick, getting creative, leading us through moves. Byron, I think the lumberjack squats are now one of my favorite moves of all time because there's so much you got to do. You got to hold the bar balanced. You got to balance your body with the squat. It's not easy. Lumberjack squats. It looks like Byron's going for a back stretch though. Now he's going to stretch out his back. If you don't have a bar, you can just put your hands on your hips, kind of lean back, lean and forward, lean and back and forward. Just nice and slow, nice and easy. It should feel good. It should feel okay. Lean on forward. Lean and back. Forward and back. Nice. There you go, Byron. Great moves. Forward and back with the back stretch. Going down again. He's going to stretch out the, the hamstrings. All the muscles in our lower back. Even the muscles that are our glutes. That's what we sit on. We sit on our glutes. It looks like Byron's putting the resistance bar down. And he's going into martial arts, everybody. He's going into a bow. You know, that means Byron is not done. He went into a martial arts bow. And now the martial art lesson is going to begin. So he's got his hands up. He's in a defense position. So you won't be able to get him because he's got those arms up. And that's going to protect him. And now he's bringing out. He's got that left arm. It's kind of reaching out. And he's holding that jab. Remember, sometimes you practice martial arts slowly. Sometimes it's slow and sometimes it's fast. There we go. Byron's got bringing in some blocks. He's got the elbows up high. He's got the wrists moving. He's bringing down the hammer on that one. Nice job, Byron. Look at that. Bringing that. That's the high to low block. If somebody was trying to maybe poke at you with a, something like a sword or a, a baton and you could do the high to low block and knock it down, maybe not a sword. I don't know. I wouldn't be fighting. All right, keep it going. There we go. Nice, Byron. Nice moves down to the ground, bringing those punches all the way down. Looks like he's stirring it up at the elbow, stirring it up, winding it up, winding up the other arm, winding them both up, going down with the right, going across the body, doing some duck moves. I like it. Ducking down, ducking down. Got to make those blocks and got the arms up, making the duck moves. Got the missing all the punches. There we go. Now he's bringing the punches. Byron's going for the punches. It's a right and a left and a right, right and a left and a right and a left and down with the blocks. There we go. Blocking all around, moving those arms, moving and grooving. Oh, hold it out there. Show everybody what you got in your hand. Oh, you're not going to show them. You're going to show them your other hand. Here we go. Going for some quick punches and he's keeping his guard up. Oh, there we go with some more punches. Looks like he got a slap to the face. There we go. Holding up that guard. Another one, two, one, two, one, two, right, left. He's stirring it up and he is done. Great job, Byron. Excellent job. Wow. Nice job to Byron. Great job to Nick. Both of these guys. That was terrific. Oh, that rhymes itself. Nick and terrific. I like it. Great job. Again, everybody, Byron took us through these moves. He had the sandbag, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. That's working on your finger strength. It's working on your wrists, all the muscles in your forearms, in your elbows. It's even working on your shoulders and some of your core. Moving it around our back, it's going to work on some of our flexibility. Moving it up, doing the balance with it on our head or on our shoulder. Those are the exercises that work on our muscles helping us to be still. If you think about sometimes our muscles... It's a good thing if they can help us with that balance. Let's try out another exercise with the frying pan. I'm a little inspired by Byron. Let's go ahead and have a sip of water. 
And just like Byron was doing, if I had my frying pan here, and if I wanted to go right hand to left hand without dropping the ball, you can see I can't go as fast as Byron was, but those moves, they really help because this is a lot of working with my hands, working with my fingers, using pressure to squeeze and to hold on to something and then maybe extend it out. So I might bring it back in here, apply some pressure, bring it back in here, apply pressure side to side. Now, can I go behind my back with it? Now, that's interesting. So let's see. So to not drop the ball, I got the ball on here. Let's see if I can do this without dropping the ball. And it's tough. I got to find a way. Reaching back here, bringing it around, reaching over here. Who thinks I have the ball? Who thinks I don't? You think I got it? Or you think I don't have it? Some people don't think I have it. I got it. I made it all the way around. So, again, another challenge, very challenging exercise, actually, to move this around. And now, look at that. Now I know what to do. So here's something I've never done in my life. I've never, ever handed off a skillet behind my back trying to keep something on it. I've never done that. And the first time I did it, I had to think about it. I had to be like, I don't know how to do this. But then right away, as soon as I did it just that one time, my brain and my muscles, they had a conversation that said, hey, you know what? That's the way to do it. And let's practice that now and get better. And look at that. I've now done it, I think, three, maybe four times. And I'm getting really good at it. And so you can use techniques like that. You can also think to yourself, what might be something that is difficult, but I think I can get. And then you try it and you go through the process of trying to figure it out. And when you do figure it out, your brain's going to say, yep, we got that now. We can do that. So even if it's something you've never done before, I'd never done that before with the frying pan. All right, let's have a sip of water. Let's get a time check. We're doing good on time. All right. Let's see. Let's see what time we have. Ooh, we got enough time. We got enough time for something fun. Let's see if I can find something fun for us to do. Ooh, all right. Let me look on here. Oh, let me find something. All right, I'm looking. I'm looking on the backgrounds here for something really fun. Ooh, we got the fruit. We got the veggies. They always they always give us something fun to do. Ooh, what about a mystery door? All right, we got time for maybe one door, maybe two. Which one's it gonna be? Are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Door. We got one. Door number two, door number three, or door number four. What's it gonna be? I'm seeing four. I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a lot of fours out there, everybody. So we're gonna go with it. Door number four. What's behind door number four? Who remembers what's behind door number four? What is this? Whoa, it's the bear. Oh my gosh, everybody. What does that mean? Oh my gosh. It's gonna be the tiger and the giraffe. And we got one more. We got the king of the jungle. So we're going to be doing animal tap. All right. This one always gets a little crazy, but just have a little fun with it. We're going to be moving our arms, reaching out. We got to reach and touch where they're popping up. So if they pop up up top, we go up top, down low, down low, over to the side, over to the side, just like that. So let's see how we do. And uh, oh my gosh, I got to be thinking about this because it's backwards for me. Here we go. We're going to get it started in maybe three two one all right there we go all right where are they gonna be Ooh, double double hands double hands going up raise the roof push the roof down it's a roof push down up and down we're going up and down nice and then just down there we go Ooh, high and low high and low Ooh, low high low high Ooh, i got it backwards that's okay i'm just gonna go with it all right. Oh, here they all are. Oh, panda. Oh, lion. Giraffe. Oh, this is tough for me. It's so backwards. There we go. Monkey. Bear. Cheetah. Tiger. Giraffe. Elephant. Panda. Lion. Cheetah. 
bear, monkey, lion, giraffe, cheetah. Oh, I, I got pretty good at it this time. It's super fast. Now, here we go. Just tap it all around. Ooh, but did anybody notice? I did. I felt like that was one of my better times on the door. Do we have time for one more? Let's try one more. What else? What else could we do? Door one, door two, door three. How about door one? We got a door one. I see some ones. I see some ones and twos. I don't know. I just clicked the button. Oh, I got the I got door one. It's the star. What is this? This is where we got to get down low when we have the stars flying across. So remember, we're going to duck down when we see a shooting star come out of the screen. Oh, there we go. Got a duck. Got to duck down low. There's another one ducking down, getting underneath it. You can do a squat or you can do a forward duck. There we go. Oh, there's two in a row. Oh my gosh, that was tough. And then we got to lean. We got to lean out of the way. Lean out of the way. Nice big old asterisk coming out of the sky. Whew. Classic. Basic, the most basic video editing you could ever do. Whew. Down again. There we go. Duck it. Oh, down again. Got to duck down low. Here we go. We got the, the the white asterisk. Oh, there we go. Move out of the way. Nice. Oh, one more. Here we go. Moving down. <laughs> We're almost there. I can feel it in my quadriceps. Doing these squats. There you go, Nick. Good squats today. Oh, there we go. One. Got to be ready. Oh, it's right behind us. Oh, no. That was fun. All right, everybody. Let's get ready. Breathing motto. Who's going to do it? Let's have you do it. Yes. Yes. All right. I want to find a nice, nice background for it. This is maybe one of the best backgrounds I think I have. You guys tell me. Yes. Yes. All right, everybody. With the cat trombone, breathing motto. Let's first have a sip of water. Remember, we have one more workout this week on Friday. Tell your friends, too, if you're a part of a group, if you're a part of a club, if you have an organization that maybe you're a part of, let them know. Say, hey, you know, we do workouts and you can join in if you want. And we would love to have uh, more of our friends joining us live and on YouTube. And we got a lot coming up in 2024. We got some really exciting things that we're working on right now. Uh, we're really, really busy right now. And that's a good thing because that means some real neat things are coming our way. A lot of exciting stuff, even, even better than the cat playing the trombone, even better. Believe it. All right, here we go, everybody in five, four, three, two, one, breathe in the good, breathe out the bad, breathe in the happy and breathe out the sad. Breathe in your best, breathe out the worst, and breathe in your power so you reach your goals first. Think of how long this cat had to practice to get good at the trombone. You got to practice. Try something new. Remember about the frying pan. Try something new. Try something you've never done that you got to think about. And let's talk about it on Friday at the Fitness Social. Here we go. Nick, give us the final countdown. Here we go. Nick's got the final countdown. I want you day. I will dig you day on Friday night. And bye, buddy. Do everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Great job, Mary. Bye, Jane. everyone. Here Carl, we go. Tyler, Me, two, and one. Pat five, Natalie, Galaxy S2.